Welcome back to the Motorcycle Shed. Now this little beauty is a 1992 Kawasaki ZR1100 Zephyr and the clutch has gone. So today's task is to find out exactly what the problem is and what needs replacing. This bike has a hydraulic clutch. That is the master cylinder and it's connected by pipe work down to the slave cylinder which is here. And the slave cylinder is underneath this cover, so let's just uh, undo this and uh, see what it looks like. And you'll need the 8mm for this. And there's only really two reasons for clutch failure on this machine. Firstly, that the hydraulics have gone, or secondly, that the plates and springs have worn beyond their usable limit. I can clearly hear the pressure on the plate stack in the clutch basket being released when I pull the clutch lever in. So the system I know is operating okay. So there's the slave cylinder. And uh, that looks in great condition. There's no leaks. The hose piping is new. Uh, I've changed the fluid, so I know this is solid. So it has to be the plates and springs. And to do this, you'll need the following tools. 18mm and 8mm sockets. A 5mm hex drive two small screwdrivers to help get the plates to come out of the clutch basket and a low range torque wrench typically being able to handle between 5 and 30 newton meters. The first thing to do is to drain the oil completely from the engine and while we're at it we might as well change the oil filter as well. Um, so in terms of draining the oil there are two drain plugs here. Uh, the first one is downward facing and it's here and the second one forward facing and it's here. Just come around here a little bit. There is the oil filter cover. Now I, I would say really it's every time you change oil, change a filter as well. So you undo the master uh, sump drain plug and then you undo, undo this one and so yet some more oil will come out and then you can change the filter as well. There we go. So now it's out, the oil filter assembly looks like this as it comes out. Mucky carved in oil of course, so gently pull this off. Okay, pull that gently off there. So note the, uh, the filter has pulled this washer off, so I just retain the washer. Right, next is the clutch cover. Gently pull this off. There we go. And there is the clutch. So let's remove the clutch spring bolts. We'll do them in that sort of order. Then the clutch spring plate will just pull off. And for that, you will need a 5mm hex. Right, the clutch spring plate should gently pull off. There we go. Perfect. In the middle of the shot, you can see the needle roller thrust bearing, and this is sitting on top of the clutch spring plate pusher, which in turn is pushed outwards by compression of the clutch lever and hydraulics. So we just need to gently withdraw this. The next job is to take both the friction plates and the steel plates out of the clutch housing, and they just literally pull towards you. But it is worth noting before we do it that all the friction plates from front, from back to front fit between the upstands on the clutch housing with the exception of the last one, the outside one, or the one that we're going to take off first. And that fits one round and it fits within the upstand of the clutch housing like this. Right, that's the plates out. 
Okay, so in all, we've got eight steel plates and nine friction plates. And here are the new ones. It's eight steel plates and nine friction plates as before. And this is an EBC kit coming complete with clutch springs as well. Because the items are brand new, to avoid plate seizure, uh, what we're going to do is just coat each of the plates, both the friction plates and the uh, steel plates, in a thin coating of new oil. Right, and the first plate that goes back in is a friction plate. So let's just do a bit of that. I'm going to do both sides, I think. Okay, so first plate that goes back in is a friction plate. There we go. Push that back in. Got that in the wrong place already. Marvellous. Let's try that. That's better. All the way back. So, steel plate next. Gently uh, go around there. Steel plate, there we go. Right, finally the last friction plate and if we remember that goes one round like that perfect here's the molly grease a little bit of that on the shaft not too much there we go I'll just put that in there there we go Perfect. So here is the new needle roller thrust bearing. Now that needs a gentle lubrication. There we go. And that goes on the end of the spring plate push rod, just like that. Here is the spring plate, and there's a washer that goes right in the middle there. And that washer goes on top of the thrust bearing, like that. I'm going to put a light film of oil over the plate, and then that goes on here like that. There we go. The order of play uh, is clutch spring, clutch spring retaining bolt, and that needs a little bit of non permanent locking compound. So just push that in there and gently turn that round. Right, we're going to quickly do all of those. Slide them up slowly. These need to be tightened up to eight foot pounds. So let's and there is the basic clutch operation. Right, we can now get the cover back on. The gasket on this clutch cover is in excellent condition, so we're going to reuse it. Um, just hand tight first. Make sure, as ever, really careful about the threads. Do not want to strip a thread. So we're just gently cross tightening these. These are only eight pounds foot when we come to actually do them. Right, 
Okay. Next job. Let's get some oil back into that engine. Right, I've cleaned um, the area around the drain hole and the uh, sump, both the uh, forward facing one there and the uh, downward facing one here. And with a trace of oil on the uh, copper washers, I'm going to reinsert the drain bolts. Right, we're now going to talk these up. So this is the oil filter bypass valve and it has a rubber grommet, a rubber o-ring that goes in here. It's got a bit of uh, oil on that shaft and just drop this over it. There we go, that's in place. And gently with a bit of fresh engine oil, the o-ring that goes around the filter housing cover. There we go, that's good. Give it a little lube, there we are. Right, so that goes in here like that, there we go. Okay, so next a spring. The washer. Right, I should be wearing gloves, of course. So this then just slides on here like that. There we go. Perfect. This slides on top like that. Quite safe from that bit like that, isn't it? Into here. And screwing that in, there we go. Okay, and this is fourteen pounds foot. Right, so that is now done up. So uh Next job, now we're all fully tightened up, is to fill this baby with some oil. Right, with the engine completely dry, the capacity is five litres. Now we've, we've had the clutch plate out and it's been standing draining for about two weeks. So, um, so I would, it'll be something near five litres this. Let's make sure this is, uh, Completely clean. Well, this uh, pack of Silkaline Super 4 10W40 is four litres, so we can gently just pull this in. And this is the uh, recommended oil that Kawasaki use here in the UK when they service their bikes, so certainly the dealership do. And I like the idea that it comes in a cardboard carton now. It's uh, not bothered with the plastic uh, cartons anymore. Much easier to recycle this. Right, so that's the engine filled with oil. But let's uh, get it off the ramp, run it up, and see if our clutch replacement works. <laughs> 